Hello Internet, it's Bill here. It's been a while since I've done any videos. Um, I've actually had this one kind of in progress for a while and I had to cut power to the shop. So I finally got full power back to the shop so I can get back onto this. So one of the first video series that I posted was actually on building this, which is a accurate replica of the Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker lightsaber, which was kind of known as the hero prop. This is the one that, you know, Darth Vader and, and Luke Skywalker headed back and forth. And in the movie, there was actually a couple of different ones used and stunt ones and stuff like that. But this is the one that was used for most of the, the close-up scenes. I've got, you know, all the accurate dimensions, including some of the oddities, like, you know, these ribs aren't equally spaced and things like that, that, you know, replicate exactly what the original was. So in my first series of videos, it, uh, you know, I was still kind of learning a lot of, you know, machining in general, trying to get things onto YouTube, trying to present things in a way that it wasn't, you know, hideously boring. And I failed, I think, in all of those things. Um, still ended up with a, a very good product. You know, it's very nice, good, solid feel to it. Um, but now I've got some bigger machines. So I've got my new closing lathe. This uh, original one was all done on the, the smaller Logan. I had to take you know, much smaller cuts, took a lot more time to do it. Now I can actually do all of the parts a lot better and a lot faster. And we're going to start off with the first video, just making you know, the tip portion. So a few upgrades. I'm actually doing the, the center section here in copper, which the original was actually painted copper. And uh, these ones I'd done in brass just because I had that on hand. I uh, specifically bought some copper and actually used it to make these. So let's go ahead and see how I've done these on the new closing lathe. Starting off here with our first part is actually just the tip of the lightsaber. You can see by the dimensions that it'll have a small threaded section. One thing that's not on the drawing here that I'll be doing in the cutout is a small recess. The small recess will be done right in this area here. That will give me something that I can cut these threads into. So I've already got some stock mounted here in the collet chuck and it's turned down to three quarters of an inch outside diameter. Let's go ahead and mark and prepare to cut threads. All right, next I'm going to come in and cut a recess on this side. I'm also going to chamfer this corner. That'll give me a section here for cutting the threads. Alright, and next we'll go ahead and set this up to cut threads. Alright, to get set up on the closing lathe, in order to get 13 threads per inch, we got to set 7 on the dial and get the levers set to A and D. And to get A and D, this is the C, D, and E lever. We need to set it to D. Now we should be set up for 13 threads per inch. And then we need to engage the threading lead screw, which is to drop this guy down here to have him threaded in the forward position. The next step is to set our zeros. So on the cross slide here, which is set at 29 and a half degrees, we're going to set the dial on it to zero. I'm sorry, the compound rest, we're going to set it to zero. Then the cross side, we're going to move in until we just touch the part and then set it to zero. All 
right, and now we're ready to start threading. With everything set on zero, I can go ahead and move the compound rest in uh, about three or four thou. So that's about 180 RPM. Thirteen threads per inch measurement. Let's make sure our dials are set up right and they line up pretty well. And that does it. And there we have it. Now we gotta do a hole on this side. We'll go do that on the other lathe. Okay, the first thing I wanna do, I wanna come in and get this little knob off of here. And then I gotta come in with the tail stock. So I go in to right there. And the last thing I want to do, because this is a pretty sharp edge here, and I want to clean up any marks that the three-jaw chuck might have left, we're going to pull this guy out of the three-jaw chuck, and we're going to put the nut back on, and then put the nut into the three-jaw. There we have it. One tip of a lightsaber emitter. For the next part we've got the emitter here. So first up I've got a chunk of stock loaded up in the three jaw chuck. We're going to go ahead and face this off and clean up this side here. To go ahead and reorientate the tool here. As you can see, I've got my dial zeroed here. That way all of my movements I can do directly, just uh, dialing in how much I need to move. a little more blue on in order to highlight our next cut. So this next part is to go ahead and drill out the hole. I've already got the hole drilled. It's actually probably deep enough already, but I'm gonna go ahead and bottom out this drill bit in there and it'll be ready for the next one.
All right, for the last part, I'm going to go ahead and power tap this. I've got the lathe down in low gear. Then once we get deep enough, I can reverse the lathe and go ahead and back it out. And that leaves us all of the main features are done. All that's left is to chamfer the edges and clean it up, part it off, and then clean up the far side. For the second operation, this is kind of the nice point of actually having two lathes. While this lathe isn't as big and as rigid as the newer Clossing, this guy did actually get out five of these lightsabers. So I've got it set up to take care of the, the final operations needed on this part. Just snug, I don't need to crank down on that. I'm just going to chamfer this hole and then the rest of it's just file work. And then that gives us a finished part.
for this part, which is really a, a relatively small piece, we're going to use my new carriage stop. Found this guy on eBay. Uh, picked him up relatively cheap. Happens to be exactly for this model of lathe. Even the color matches and everything, so works out nice. So what I've done, I've already went and preset all of my stops. And the way this works is I can swing this guy out like this. And now I have a carriage stop. that I can tap the carriage up against. This first one I've set for my stock stick out length. So I know if I come out and I just touch my tool, that'll put me where I need to be for the rest of my cuts. So now I can go ahead, even just using this tool, I can face off right here going this way relatively simply. So for the next piece, I'm going to spin it all down to the same height, which I've got set on my cross slide as a zero point. Next one, I'm going to come in with the top stop to come out. And for this, I actually have to go in 437 thou. I'm going to take that in two cuts, a 300 and then 137. So start here, we'll go in 200, 300. And then for the last, we'll go in another 137. 137. And again, I'm just watching here and stopping when it gets right up against it. Once that guy's done, I swap to the middle one, and this gets our next one. I go in 75,000. And then we take that cut. Now I've got all of those cuts taken care of. I can swap in my parting tool. And now I've got my gauge set for the thickness of where this gets parted off at. I'm going to put this out of the way. I have to bring the to in.
and you got a part. A little bit of finish cleanup work to do with this guy on the smaller lathe, but other than that, he's pretty much done. And so that's the four main pieces being fabricated together. From here, I just take this piece of all thread that I cleaned up the edges, and all of these pieces will now giving me the, the tip. In the next series we'll go ahead and go over machining the bottom half and in the final series I think will be the actual end and the little controller box.